C100, Honda 50, and any Cub style Honda of its time period, 1958 to about 1966, has push rods. The C50 or Honda 50 and similar bikes 1966 and after have an overhead cam chain. A lot of this process is very similar between both versions, but the push rod version is more rare to find because the cam chain version in various iterations is still being made today. First, take off the plastic mud guard. I've already removed the key and carb, so that will be the next video. Next is taking off the cylinder head cover. Keep in mind that the little tool pouch that you may or may not still have has most of the tools you'll need to do this, but at the same time, 60 years worth of metallic fusion will make it so you'll need more than what's here. This is the oil joint bolt, which is unique to the pushrod engine, and it's stuck. check valve clearance and I'll be doing that I could probably do that in another video for now I'm just breaking the caps because it's easier to do there's a gasket between the cover and the head and it's getting replaced with a lot of other gaskets and rubbers like a lot of new stuff the kits all come from Thailand, so just stab into that gasket with a thin flathead. Show no mercy. And just so there's no surprises, this is what's coming up. Again, cam chain version is on the right, just for comparison. It's not everything that's in there, but it's the gist. Like, notice there's no chains in these diagrams. Where are the chains in the cam chain version, you may ask? It's not in there. That's what I mean when I say I'm gonna break something, like I'm breaking the seal on it. So these are the rocker arms, and after I paint it with high temperature engine paint, I'll remove the gaskets. Right now they kinda act as a paint mask. Slide out the push rods. The one on the bike's right is longer. And if you have your Honda kit, there's a spark plug wrench, which is a compact ratchet. It collapses into itself and then uses the screwdriver as a lever. So rather than making the toolkit bigger or making a ratchet that sucks, they just redesigned it. So I'm only using other tools when I have to break 60 year old cruft, but when these bikes were new, they weren't this hard to take apart. How many things made today will you be taking apart in 60 years? This is a rhetorical question, but you can answer it if you want to. If I had remembered to take off the exhaust, which is conveniently hidden from view, this would uh, be coming off much easier. So this has about 9,000 miles on it, and here's the combustion chamber where the valves are. And I was definitely burning oil. But you can see the top valve intakes air from the carb, and the bottom removes combustion, exhaust, smoke, whatever. 
So it's called a four stroke because there are four steps to the cycle. Air goes in, compression, explosion, and exhaust. Knife goes in, guts come out. Knife goes in, guts come out. So I came here to replace this piston. I've always had some issues with burning oil, but it had gotten much worse over the last year. And you could see by all the scorching on the piston. Aside from occasionally having a tail of blue smoke behind me and having to top off the oil, the real unignorable problem I was having is that once my engine got hot, if I stopped giving it throttle, or more specifically, if the engine didn't have the momentum of bike movement, to keep it going, it would start to stall out. So if I didn't give it gas, it would stall. But if I kept peppering the throttle, I could crawl along and eventually it would get going again. It's very awkward. I'd do a lot of creeping up to red lights so I wouldn't have to come to a stop. And so whether this is an issue with gummed up valves or the piston, I really don't even know. Honda and other companies, like third-party companies, sold 0 0.25, 0 0.5, 0 0.75, and one millimeter oversized pistons. So I'm not exactly skilled at measuring things. A standard piston is about 39 millimeters in diameter, and 0.25 adds 0.25 millimeters to that diameter, which is why I'm not reboring this head. I'm sending it to a machinist along with a collage of the service manual and the rings for getting the gaps right. But before I drop it off, I'm gonna clean it more and paint it. I'm using 10 year old engine paint and it's coming out kind of gloppy, but in the end, it looks fine. Don't wanna make it look too good, otherwise it won't fit with all the other stuff that is aged 60 years. At least that's my justification for doing everything a little worse than you would ideally do it. There's three ways to do things. The right way, the wrong way, and the max power way! Isn't that the wrong way? Yeah, but faster. Ow! In the spirit of doing things in not the best way, I'm gonna uh, wander off camera while putting in the first piston C-clip. These are what hold the piston onto the connecting rod. I'm starting by putting it into the groove sideways so I can grab the very end of the other side with needle nose pliers. Like right with the tip of the pliers and pull it all the way in where the notch is. After making sure the clip is fully in the track, I want to rotate it so the opening of the C is at the top of the piston so it can't pop out while the engine's running. So I'm pulling inward a little, like towards the center, all in little increments. So when putting on the piston, this arrow points down. It's how my old piston was. I did a lot of double checking on this. It's counterintuitive because the 0.25 numbering is also upside down. And if you go based on the service manual, you might think that that's what you do because they show it pointing upward. And there's this awfully pointless sentence that literally says nothing. But the tell is the wording on the cylinder is also upside down. So it makes sense that the 0.25 of the head would be upside down. But what it comes down to is I'm just doing what people on the internet say. Internet, eh? So I have to put on the piston and then slide this little pipe thing in there. 
Now for the other C clip. Put it in. And then rotate it so the opening of the clip is pointing towards the head. You could put the rings in first, but I guess waiting till now makes it so you won't be spinning them around or scratching them. These are the three rings. From bottom to top, they are the oil scraper, lower compression ring, and upper compression ring. The oil scraper is the hardest to put on. Newer scrapers seem to come as separate lighter pieces that you put together one at a time, but this one is the thickest ring and it has to travel the furthest distance, so you have to walk it past all the other grooves without scratching things up or stretching it too much. Now it's time to open that C100 gasket kit, which looks suspiciously incomplete, but it actually isn't. It's actually just what I needed. Uh, I bought some extra gaskets with some stuff on eBay, so I was just trying to do a last second combined shipping impulse buy. These are labeled as C100 gaskets, but notice the cutout for the cam chain. Well, I didn't, uh, but you can see how much bigger the cam chain head is. The cylinder's already been oiled, but I'm adding oil to the rings so it slides in as easy as possible. And as I hit the top ring, I am pushing in on the sides of the rings as I push the cylinder over them. So I'm pushing the gap together, all while making sure the connecting rod doesn't push backwards into the engine. Getting it over the first one is the easiest, I'm doing the same thing with the second ring, except I really want to make sure everything doesn't push back into the engine because I don't want my top rings to pop back out. Otherwise, I'm just starting all over again. And once it's all the way in there, the worst is over. Now the pushrod rings are gonna wanna fall out. So use some kind of grease or Vaseline to hold them in. The stoutier one seems fine, but I also want to make sure it stays where it is when everything comes together. So I'm tacking that one in there too. I'm reusing my copper, I guess it's called a cylinder head gasket ring, blasting it with heat for at least a minute so it expands back to how it should be. This is an aluminum ring that comes with the kit. I mean, given the choice for whatever reasons, I want to put the copper in there. Tighten the nuts in an X pattern, 5.9 foot-pounds. So you're gonna do at least three tightening passes, getting tighter and tighter, because you want it to slide together evenly. I'm using the torque wrench, because otherwise I would have no idea how tight it should be. It put the push rods back in. The longer one is on the bike's right. The last of my rings in this kit go on the valve covers. And because the gasket was so stuck on there, I'm putting anti-seize on this one. Actually, I should have done it for the first gasket, but I forgot. These bottom bolts are different lengths. Obviously, if you stick one in and it's not threading, then try the other one, but I think the longer one is on the bike's right. Torque wrench again, and this time it's five foot pounds, or on this it's 60 inch pounds. And it'll be the same for the oil drain bolt. And 
And that's it. Keeping the legs shield off so I can see what's going on. More Honda stuff is coming.